So let's go into chapter one. So chapter, chapter one. So chapter one is modeling change. All right, so one of the main things about uh, modeling change is this way of looking at change. So we can say that the future value is equal to the present value plus some change. So remember the idea is that we want to predict the future of some value. And the idea is gonna be in this particular chapter is that it's gonna be the present value plus something that changes. Now this part uh, changes, this could be positive or negative. Or negative. So think about it this way. Let's say you want to talk about the price of gas in the future. So what is the price of gas, uh, gas in the future? Is the gas, the price of the gas today plus whatever it changes. If it is positive change, then the value of that gas is gonna increase. If it is negative change, then the value of the future uh, for the future price of the gas will be less. Okay, okay so if you, if you look at this equation here, I can actually solve for change. So think about it, this is the variable. So what will be change here? So, so change will be equal to future value minus the present value. So change will be future value minus present value. So just by looking at this, at this idea. And this is the idea that's gonna be present in this chapter. The idea that future value is always present value plus, plus change. Now there is a difference between the kind of changes that we have. So the idea is this. So one, so if change Uh, takes place over discrete time periods, then in that case, we're gonna say, we're gonna say that the change, then in this case, change gives what we call a difference equation. So a difference equation. So whenever change is discrete, we say we're gonna get a different equation. And you will see what that is a little bit later. Now, what does discrete here mean? Discrete time periods. So this discrete time periods basically is like, for example, every day or every month. So we will consider that to be discrete. And when change happens discretely, we're gonna get a difference equation. The other way that change can happen is if it takes place continuously. So if change takes place continuously with respect to time, so continuously you can think about it, for example, as every second. So it's always changing. It doesn't happen day by day. It doesn't happen but month by month. It happens continuously. Then we get what we call a differential equation. A differential equation. And so you don't actually have to know the difference. I mean, the names, basically. So difference equation, which is the first one here, is when change happened discreetly. So day by day, month by month, and so on. And differential equation is when change happened continuously. 
All right, so, so this is the introduction to that chapter. So I'm gonna go into section 1.1, which is modeling change with difference equations. So what does that mean? For this section, because we're talking about difference, it's not differential equation, this is difference equations, then that means that the change is gonna be discrete. So we're gonna assume that it happens like every month, every day and so on. So, so let me give you a definition here. So let's just start with a definition. Okay, any questions about anything so far? Any questions? Okay. So if A, so let's do some mathematics now. If A, so A here is gonna be a collection of numbers, for example, so A0 or a sequence, A1. So here we're gonna start labeling those elements of the sequence uh, with zero. So we're gonna start at zero. So A0 will be the first element in the sequence. This curly braces that is here, remember this is just the notation for set. So this is a collection of a list. So if this is a sequence, so if this is a sequence of numbers, so real numbers in general, uh, then the first difference are, so we're gonna, you will see in a second what this means. So. Uh, in terms of a picture. So we have delta, this is the uh, capital Greek letter delta, delta of A0 is the first difference and is A1 minus A0. So it's basically the second element of the sequence minus the first. And then the next one, delta of A1 will be equal to A2 minus A1. I will draw a picture and you will see that makes sense in a second. So let's say you have delta of A2 and that will be A3 minus A2 and so on. And in general, what you have is A of delta of a n is equal to a of n plus one minus a n. So this is in general the, the nth difference. What does that mean? So what is the picture of all of this? You will, uh, let me draw a picture for you to show you what this actually means. So let's say for example, you have this in the real line. And your first element here is a zero. And the next element of that sequence is a one, a one. And then next one is a two and so on. Let's say all the way later, you have a n and then you have a n plus one. Now, what is are all, all these deltas that are here? The first one, this one, delta, of a zero is the change that happens in the first part from a zero to a one. So this is a of delta of a zero, okay? And the next one is that change, whatever the distance between a one and a two is. So it's gonna be delta of a one and so on. So this one is the last one, this is delta of a n. So the, this is actually the distance. If you look at this as a sequence of numbers in the real line, the delta corresponds to the distance between the delta a zero corresponds to the distance between a zero and a one and so on for all of those things. So that's why is the difference. So when you have the distance between a zero and a one, that is a one minus a zero and so on for the other ones. Okay, is that, is that clear for everybody? Yeah. 
Okay, any yeah. questions? Okay, so sure. any questions about any of that? Now, why are we talking about this here? Because imagine that this AN here, the AN is the present value. And AN plus one is the future value. So the future value will be equal to the present value plus whatever the change happens in that interval. Okay, is that making sense for everybody? Is that clear? Yes. Okay, yeah. so, okay, so, so, so if you write down AN plus one equals AN plus delta of AN, we are saying exactly the same thing we were saying before. We are saying this is the future value is equal. Okay, again, so it's trying to update, give it a second. So this one is the present value plus whatever change happens. So delta of AN is just a fancy way to say that's just uh, the change. Okay. The idea for what we're gonna do later, actually in this section, is because we want a formula for the future value, we're gonna, we're gonna know what the present value is. And basically what we want is to find a formula for the change. So once you figure out the change, and you of course know the present value, then you can figure out what the future value will be. Okay. Okay. So, I'm, all right. So let's actually do. So this is all like a preparation for it. So let's do actually an example. So some example here. So let me give you an example. So I'll examples of a savings certificate. Severance certificate. So let, let me say what that, what the example is. So let's look at the initial. So the initial value of a savings certificate, I'm just gonna say as C is let's say $10,000. So we have a savings certificate. So that's basically the, the initial amount of, of money that you have in that savings certificate. So this savings certificate accumulates. So that accumulates interest at let's say 1% per month. So every month you get 1% of whatever you had in the account. All right, so, so what happens in, in this particular case? So when you start, so let's, let's look at a picture here. Let's look at a picture. So when you start, you start, let's say, with $10,000, $10, okay? That would be your A0, right? So your, your initial investment on that savings certificate. So that would be your, your A0. Now, A1, that will be at the end of the first month, that will be the amount of money that you have applying this 1% and so on. So you have, for example, A2, that will be the money that you have at the end of the second month. So this, this here is the first one, this here is the second month, and so on, okay? Is that making sense? No. Okay. Any questions about this? Any questions? 
All right, so then let's say A. So I'm gonna give you the sequence here and I'll explain where, how I got this, the sequence. So let's say 10,000, this is gonna be your A0. So this is gonna be the initial, the initial amount. So that's gonna be the A0. Now that's the one that is here. Now you're gonna apply a 1% on it. So that means the next, the A1, which is gonna be this value right here, is gonna be $10,000 plus the 1% that you make over that 10,000. Now, if you actually use a calculator, 1% of 10,000 will be $800. So at the end of the first month, uh, you will have uh, 10,000. 100, right? Okay. That would be the value of A of A1. All right, so now what happens for the next one, which is gonna be the A2? So this one is A2. Now, this 1%, so let me ask you a question here. Is this 1% for this value of A2? Is this 1% a 1% of 10,000 again? Exactly, the 10,100. So I'm gonna take 1% of this and then I'm gonna add it to this one again, right? So that's gonna give us, let's say, what's so let's say it's 10,201 if you compute that and you continue that way, the next one will be 10,303 and that will be the value. This is gonna be the value of A3 and so on. Right, and so on. So you will have a sequence there of those values. Okay. So so let's let's recap again. So what is a zero? So a zero here is the initial value. So this is the initial value. A one is the value at the end of the first month. And so on. A2 will be the value of at the end of the second month and so on and so on, so forth, right? All right, so let's try to actually get some kind of formula for this. And this is where uh, the difference equation is gonna come into play. Now remember what the model we have, which is this. The, pre, the future value, which is AN plus one, is gonna be equal to AN plus delta of AN. Right. So in most cases, what we want is to have a formula for delta of AN. So that's what we want. So most cases, we want a formula for this. So we want a formula in terms of a n. Why of a n? Because that is the present. So we're supposed to know, to know this. So once we get a formula for this in terms of a n, the right hand side of this equation will be all in terms of a n, which is the present. So that way, knowing the present, we'll be able to predict what happens in the future. Okay. So let's try to get a formula for this, for this delta of a n. Now, to get a formula for delta of a n, let me draw again the picture here. So let's look at what happens in the formula. So this is a n, that's the present. And then we have a n plus one, that is the future. And this delta of a n is the change that happens between the present and the future. So we want a formula what happens here. So what is this delta of a n? Now, so let me ask you a question. In this, in this month, in this month right here, this month, what changes there? What is the, the thing that changes in general? To start with an amount, how do you get to the next amount? What is the thing that changes, makes the change there? The interest, right? Exactly. So this is gonna be the interest. 
So the interest paid in dollars. So that's what changes there. Now, because we are looking at this month here, this is the interest pays in dollars. That's the interest that we are getting. That's the 1%. Now, this is 1% because we are looking at this delta of AN. Let me ask you this question. This is 1% of, one, of what quantity? Exactly, exactly. So this, pretty good. So this is gonna be equal to 1% of AN. All right, so what is 1% of, of AN? So just basically multiply by 0 0.01, right? So let's translate, let's translate this mathematically. So it's gonna be 0 0.01 that multiplies a n. And this is one of the things that we wanted to do. So we wanted to get a formula for a n, for delta of a n in terms of a n. Zero, well, let me correct this here. So this is, the, this is what we wanted. We want a formula for delta of a n in terms of a n, okay? So let's go back to our formula here for the initial formula, which is what we always are doing in this section. So a n plus one, which is the future value, is gonna be the present value a n plus, plus this delta x. But what is this delta x? This delta x is this quantity, 0 0.01 an. Okay. All right, let's simplify this formula here. So let's look at this. So these are uh, like terms. So we can actually write down what is an plus one. So an plus one is equal to, this is basically what we have here is uh, one times a n plus 0 0.01 a n. So that's gonna give us uh, 1.01 a n. Okay. So this is the formula we were looking for. So we can predict the future, that's a n plus one, in terms of the present with this formula that we have here. So remember this a n represents the amount of money that you have in that savings certificate. Now, there is something missing here. Uh, this is what well, uh, we call a recurrence formula. Recurrence. A recurrence formula, basically what that means is it, it's calling itself. So it's a sequence of the ANs, or A-N plus one, in terms of the previous one. So this is a recurrence formula. And there's something missing, which is use the initial condition. So the initial condition is A0, so the starting point of your sequence. So you have a sequence A0, A1, A2, and so on. You have a formula to construct the whole sequence, which is this one, but you also have to say, what is the initial value of A0? Now, what is, so let me ask you a question here. What is A0 here? So that's the 10,000. So this, this thing that is here, both of these things together is what we call a dynamical system. Or difference equation. So when you're looking at, at this type of things, so this is well, this section, section 1.1 is usually about, is about, we're gonna come up with some kind of recurrence formula for the sequence. We happens discreetly, this happens every month. And this is the initial condition. So that's why we call it difference equation because it happens discreetly, okay? All right, so I'm gonna show you now. So how, what, how, what do you do with this type of formulas here? Now you can put this maybe in Excel and do it. Uh, what we're gonna do in this class is use Mathematica for this type of computation. So I'm gonna show you how we can set up this type of difference equation in Mathematica to give us some values. So I'm gonna show you here in Mathematica. 
the code for Mathematica to work for difference equation is this one that is here. It's called recurrence table. If you start typing recurrence, it's going to show up of one of the things that you can do. Now, what is the syntax for recurrence table? So it's always open uh, bra bracket, close bracket here. And here I'm going to put my formula. You see, this is the formula I had, right? This is a n plus one. In Mathematica, you're going to say a bracket a n plus one. And it has to be a double equal, double equal 1.01 .01 times a n. This is the formula. This one here is the formula I have here. Now you also have to give it the initial condition. So this is the A0 equal to 10,000. This in courtly braces that you see here, this is where you're gonna put your difference equation here. This one, the initial condition, put it in between courtly braces. This A is the name of your sequence. So in this case, the name of our sequence is A. So we call it A. And then this open and courtly braces that is at the end is telling me here, how many values of n I want. So I want to start at zero, n, which is the index here, is going to start at zero and go all the way up to 17. I can put here five or 10 or 20 or whatever. Okay. So, all right. So let's, let's press enter here and see what happens. So what this is going to give me, is going to give me the values of that sequence, which in this case is the saving certificate, here, so this is the initial value, 10,000, 10,100, and so on. It gives me this list. If you change this number here, it will, it will change the number of, of elements that you, you're going to get as an answer here. Now, if you watch the video tutorial for Mathematica, you know that whenever you have something like this and I want to do something else with it, I give it a name. So in this case, I need, give the name L. So L equals to this is going to refer to this list. Now, if you want to see this a little bit better, you can use table form. And table form is going to give you this in terms of a column, so you can see this better. So here you have, this is the initial amount. This is the, at the end of the first month, and so on. Okay. All right, so what is the next thing I'm going to do here? Uh, you see in this table here, I don't have the month here. So I will want to have, like for example, zero is 10,000, one, is 10,100. So what I'm doing here is basically make it look better. So this here, if you watch the tutorial of Mathematica, this table is going to make a list, a list of two values. The value of the nth position of the list L, so L1, L2, L3, and so on, and Mathematica list are labeled one, two, three, so they don't start at zero position zero, position one, like you do in computer design, you start at one with list. And I'm gonna put the N minus one here. The N minus one is basically giving me, so if it's L1, which is this 10,000, L1 is the initial amount, which is one minus one, which is zero. So zero L1, one L2 and so on. Is that, is that so this here is going to go from 1 to 18 to make sure that we have here all of this. So I'm going to do this. So it's going to give me the pair 0, 10,000. And if I use again the table form to make it look like this one, like, like the one that is here, all of this, then it's going to give me that, that uh, display here. So 0, 10,000 and so on. So if you want to know what happens in the 17th month, of that saving certificate is going to give you this much money at the end of the 17th month. So list plot, this is another, uh, another way to visualize things in Mathematica. So when you have list plot, you have a list here that I call L2, which is all of these elements in that list of the saving certificate. List plot, what it's going to do is going to give me a graphical representation of how that saving certificate is growing. So list plot or whatever that list is called. In this case, I call it L2 because that's what is here. This is the L2. So if we press enter here, it's going to give me a list. So we can see here, if we start with $10,000 and at 1%, this is going to be increasing 
here, the, the amount of money in that savings certificate. All right, so let me go back here to OneNote and I'm gonna continue with another example. So we let's, let's look at a similar example, but now let's change things a little bit. So let me look at this example here. And this is gonna be uh, the, all right. So this is a continuation. with the previous example. Okay, so we're gonna modify the previous example is same as in the previous example. So the same thing, the $1,000 initial uh, investment in the savings certificate, 1% of uh, interest, but in this case, but we withdraw uh, $600 every month. Okay. So let's try to solve the same problem, but now uh, we're gonna withdraw from the account uh, every month $600. So we're gonna do a couple of things. The first thing is find delta of a n, which is the change that happens from present to future. This is in terms of a n, in terms of the present, so that's a n. And the second part will be fine a n plus one in terms of a n. Okay. All right. So let's look at the solution here. All right. So let's draw a picture again of what we have here. So here we have a n, that's the present. And then we have the future, which is a n plus one. Now the delta of a n is what happens in that month. So from the change that happens from present to future. Now the first part of the problem is asking me to find a n, the delta of a n in terms of a n. So let's try to do that. So this is, let's write down this. So this is the change. Right. Now, what happens in this month? Uh, two things happen, right? So very good. So we have the interest and then minus the withdrawal. So that is what happens, or the change that is happening there. Now, this interest is an interest of 1%. So this is 1% of AN. And here, the withdrawal is a withdrawal that always is constant. That withdrawal is always uh, $600. So we have this minus $600. So point zero one an minus uh, six hundred. So that's going to give us the formula for delta of an. So that's the first part uh, we needed to do. So this answers number one. Part one. So let's let's try now to find an plus one in terms of an. So it's always the same formula. So the formula is, because we are taking this uh, type of paradigm, is future value, which is a n plus one, is equal to a n, which is the present value, plus delta of a n, which is the same, the change. So future value equals to present 
plus the change. So then we'll have our formula. So it's gonna be AN plus one equals to AN plus, and we already have a formula for delta of AN, which is this formula right here. So it's gonna be uh, 0 0.01 AN minus the $600 that we are withdrawing from that account. So one more thing here is you take th these two things and you put them together. So then we have the AM plus one is equal to just add them. So this is one point AN 0 0.01. So that's gonna give us 1.01 AN minus 600 there. Let's complete our difference equation. So our difference equation will usually have some recurrence relation, and we will have to have some initial condition. So the same example as before, but we just withdrawing $600 from the account, which is what this minus 600 here means. All right, let's look at what happens with this type of situation. So now we are starting with the same thing, $10,000 savings certificate and we have 1%, but now we are withdrawing $600. So let me show you this in Mathematica again. So it's similar to what we did in the other, in the other version. So I again have the recurrence table, open, close, square bracket. Here, I'm gonna have my recurrence relation, which is now AN plus one. I have to use the double equal here, 1.01 AN minus 600, that's taken into account that we have the withdrawal the initial amount of money is 10,000. Remember, when you type this, you make sure they have the right syntax, AN for the name of the sequence, and we're gonna start at zero and then 17. You can change this for whatever you want. So I'm gonna call this L again. And if we're gonna look at this in the form of a table to make it a little bit more appealing to look at, then this is what happens. Now, from this type of situation, what is happening here? In the previous example, we were increasing our money. What happens in this example? We are losing money, right? Uh, so here, at the end of the 17th month, we only have 700, 784 dollars there. So we are actually losing money if we withdraw $600 from the account every month. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's finish the class now and I will see you guys on Thursday again, okay?